What's going on guys? Welcome back to this video. Today we're doing probe from TryHackMe and in this video we're going to practice some of the information gathering and scanning skills. You will need these skills if you are doing a pen test or even if you are just gathering information about your target. So in this room we have a couple of questions. We can answer these questions by just going over the scanning phase of the cyber kill chain. So we have the target here. So what we're going to do, we're going to use various scanning tools, such as Nmap, um, Nikto, and other web vulnerability scanners. So let's go ahead and start this. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is to scan for the host. We want to check if the host is live and we want to check what are the services and the open ports. So we start with sudo nmap and then we select what we want to do. The first thing I'm going to do dash p dash indicating that I want to scan for all the ports because this is an unknown machine to me. I don't want to skip or miss any port. That's why I want to scan for all the ports dash p dash. And then I can just take the IP address and that's it. So while we do this, we want, we want, uh, we just want to list the open ports, and then based on the information we get from the output, we tailor the scanning to be more detailed toward one of uh, the uh, the scan ports. So to, to to make the scanner to make the scanning faster, what we can do we can do dash t, and we can select or control the level of noise of the scan. So starting with one it is the um it's very calm scan two we go up in noise so basically i'm gonna go with t4 because we are not scanning a secure network we are scanning an open network it's just a network for testing so it doesn't uh, it, it doesn't uh, affect the quality of the testing that's why if we if we if we go up in speed with a dash t option just put in mind that this is a very noisy scan now, if you are scanning a real network, it's recommended if you start with T1 or T2. So let's start with T4. We are waiting for the output. So while this is running, let's take advantage of time and take a look at something else. So if you navigate to the web page by just putting the IP address in the URL bar, we can see that we have nothing on the page, only 403 forbidden. Now we are gathering information. So that's also a piece of information. Now we can also take a look at the source code. No source code here. All right. So that's for the hey HTTP. Now if we try to visit the counterpart, which is HTTPS, see if there is a site there. And we get a security warning. It means that there is a site hosted on port 443. So advanced, uh, we can proceed to take a look. And again, we have forbidden error, but we get the Apache version 2441. And it is running on port 443. This answers one of the questions. So what is the version of the Apache server? It is 2441. Okay. Now, apart from determining the version of the software running on the machine, specifically here we are talking about the web server, we can also take a look at the certificate information. Usually, the certificate holds a plethora of information about your target. So we can click on certificate is not valid, and we can take a look at the details, such as we can see the common name which looks like the qualified domain name for this site. The organization name, the unit, other information about the certificate, such as when it was issued on, and when it expires, the public key of the certificate. And when we click on details here, we see other details. We can also export the certificate. So that answers another question. What is the fully qualified domain name for the website hosted using a self-signed certificate? 
and contains critical server information as the ho home page so this is the domain name now the port number will be revealed in the uh, in map scan which is i guess not finished yet let's check it out yeah not finished because we are scanning all ports it might it might take some time okay and we also okay what's the email address associated with the ssl certificate now basically here using chrome i haven't uh, got a hold of the email address if we visit the same page using firefox and we click on advanced click on view cert and here we see additional information such as the email address okay so now we know what is hosted on port 80 and port 443, 443 the fully qualified domain name the email address now usually uh, during penetration testing engagements and even if you are doing ctf challenge when you don't find a meaningful content on the web page you would go ahead you might go ahead and scan for the directories for hidden directories so for that we're going to use gobuster so gobuster is a tool for scanning directories dir indicating want to scan for directories and dash u the url dash w for the word list now there are additional things we can do with gobuster not only scanning directories we can also scan for um, files with various extensions such as php um, html so on and so forth but first i need to go to the notes because i cannot memorize all the commands as you know so let's see here so we go to information gathering and we search for gobuster this is scanning for subdomains okay so here we scan for directories fine and in this command we can as we, we can scan for files with various extensions by determining the type of file php html text and gs now let's first scan for directories using this command and this uh, process covers the last question if you scroll down what is the flag value associated with the web page hosted on port 8000 so if we go to port 8000 and we remove the s we're going to assume there is no encryption as you can see there is nothing here now this is the page that we're supposed to scan for directories so we're going to go back and cancel this yeah as you can see we have discovered one directory which is contact us but it is 301 now if you try to visit this page again you are forbidden it's very uh, expected let's go back now and cancel the scan and we're going to attach the port 8000 now we selected the word list common we might go for another word list in another uh, terminal let's go ahead and open the terminal new terminal and here we say word lists and we're going to select medium this is a fairly common word list in ctf scenarios hopefully the server will be able to handle all of this load it's not too much load but still so we have another contact us page here and this will give you the, cha the challenge flag so we're going to take this and put it down there
Okay, so let's go back. Now, the idea here is, oh, we got another directory, JavaScript. You might get a lot of directories using these tools. So the idea is, guys, we actually scan for these directories or files, and then we go ahead and navigate to see what is the actual content there. So if we try with JavaScript, this is also forbidden. Try it on the other port. So you get the idea. In the current scenario, there won't be any meaningful content revealed if we scan further than the required. That's why I'm going to stop the scan. I'm going to assume, guys, that you got the idea of scanning for directories. Okay, so this is the result of the in-map scan. As you can see, we have got a lot of open ports as well as filtered ports. Now, we have 22, SSH, 80, 443, and there is something running on port 1338, and another service running on port 1443. Um, got also, this we have actually enumerated the uh, web server running on this port, and we have discovered a directory which led to the flag, and we have got this. Alright, so we are interested more in learning about the FTP server. So let's go ahead and see these two ports. We want more details about these ports. So we're going to say sudo nmap-p and the port is 1338-sv. What is the service running there? More information about the service and the version. And we've got the IP address. Now, let's run another scan on port uh, 1, 1443. So let's go ahead. And let's name this as nmap2. So on this port, did I copy the port correctly? Yeah, no. I think I have typed this wrong. So it's 1443. I don't know why it is 33. okay so as you can see guys on this board there is indeed an ftp server running and this is the version of the server we can try to interact with the server and grab the banner by trying to connect to the server so we type ftp followed by the ip address and then we specify the port 1338 if you don't specify the port it will connect to by default to port 21, which is the designated port for the FTP service. Now, when you connect, you are greeted with the flag, right? Usually, guys, this is the banner of the FTP server. Now, we might try to go ahead and uh, log in, maybe using anonymous credentials. Anonymous. Now, if anonymous uh, logging is enabled no it's not enabled so you cannot log in as anonymous so basically when anonymous uh, login is enabled you will be able to use anonymous credentials anonymous has username and anonymous has the password to log into the ftp server but these settings are not enabled on the target machine so we that, that's why we wouldn't uh, we couldn't log in now this is the flag for the service for the question and basically this flag represents the banner let's go here and see what is the other service running on port 1443 so it is another web server running here it is apache and this is the version let's go ahead and visit this page see what is running 
this is a bad request you, uh, your browser sent a request that the server couldn't understand all right so this is the web page of the server let's go ahead and see what are the questions here so we answered this question what is the port of the ftp service now what is the value of the php extension build on the server the question is which server because we got a lot of web servers running Let's go back to the main port scan. So we have a web server running on port 80, another one on port 443, and port 1443, and the last one on port 8000. So which one of them is the one that has the PHP extension enabled? How do you find out? Let's go ahead and do this scan. Exit sudo nmap dash p and we specify the ports 80 443 1443 and lastly 8000 dash and we specify dash a because we want to get all details about these um, uh, ports and then we specify the ip address all right so now we get more details about every one of these servers so on port 80 the web server software is light hey httpd and this is the version okay another one running a port 443 the version is 24441 and it is apache httpd and this is the information the details about the request that got sent and the response was forbidden scrolling down we have got this one running also apache the same version and here we get interesting information such as the php version yeah so this is the php version 7.4.3 that's the um the benefit of doing detailed nmap scan you get more information more than just the ports open and the services so this is the php version and this is the php info so most probably it is the server running on port 1443 the one that holds the php extension but we want to find out the extension build so this is not enough so we have to find out through the server we're going to the page here now take a look at this we get now the, the php information about the server if we search for extension we get all the extensions enabled so this is the extension built php extension built okay what is the banner of the ftp service we answer this what software is used for managing the database on the server now usually guys when there is php enabled on the server the software used or the most common software used for managing php and databases is php my admin you can verify this by trying to or by just searching php my admin in the configuration so nothing here let's start to visit php my admin this way we can verify if there is an installation on this instance and indeed there is php my admin installation on this host what is the content management system hosted on the server okay so now we want to find out which server um, has a content management system installed let's go back to the port scan up there so now we know what is running on these ports we still got this one 9007 it says it's OGS dash client. Now let's go ahead and scan this port in details. 9007. You can try to visit this port or this page 9007. going to advance so there is a web server again running on this port welcome to my blog and it is screaming wordpress as you can see 
Um, if we can go to the source, we can find out. So search for wp dash, and indeed there are instances or there are directories <coughs> that indicate this is a WordPress installation. So indeed this is a WordPress installation here. So that's the content management system running on the server. That's how you find out. <coughs> but this is a uh, guesswork, right? You can still find out using the port scan. So this is the result. A web server running. But there isn't much details about whether this is a WordPress or another server running or another content management system. So how do you find out? You go here to the web page. We search, we search through the uh, source code. You can also use try to visit the admin page, wb-admin. If this was a WordPress, it would redirect you to the administration login form. And now it redirects you to myblog.thm. So you're going to have to add this to the host file. Let's go ahead and do that. So paste this. So my blog .thm. All right. Let's remove the dot from the end and try to visit this one more time. And this is another confirmation that this is a WordPress running on the server. Okay, so what is the version number of the CMS hosted on the server? We want to find the version number of the WordPress. How do you find this out? So basically, you can find this by going to the main page and scrolling down, we can see powered by not showing we can right click and view the page source see if the wordpress version is listed somewhere you can search version nothing okay so how do we find out the version um, basically you can install an extension called whoopilizer but let's not rely on extensions. Let's go back and use WB Scan, which is a dedicated tool for scanning WordPress installations. So sudo WB Scan dash dash URL. Let's go through the notes one more time and search for WB Scan. WordPress. How about this? WB Scan. Okay. So fully enumerate this and scan for vulnerabilities. We don't want to scan for vulnerabilities. We're going to skip this one. Running brute force. Okay, so you could do this. Dash dash URL. HTTPS. Myblog.thm. Running on port 9007. Um, dash dash enumerate. We're going to say all. Enumerate everything. AP for all plugins, AT for all themes. Config backups. All right. So let's use this option. And we're going to say disable the T. LC checks, TLS checks. We, could, we don't want the self signed certificate to hinder the scan. So we're going to disable the checks. WordPress version 6.2.2, .2, which is identified as insecure. This is the WordPress version. What is the username for the admin panel of the CMS? This would show here as well in the scan, it's supposed to be shown. Let's scroll down, see if the see if we reached the user enumeration stage. 
not yet so we enumerating all the plugins no plugins found now it is enumerating the themes we can interrupt the scan and only enumerate for the users so let's do that we don't want the scan to consume more time so we're going to say enumerate you only users Now it is enumerating the users. And we see there is one user identified, which is Joomla. That's the username. During vulnerability scanning, OSVDB, which is an engine used by a very popular vulnerability scanner called Nikto, detects a file that may be used to identify the blogging site software. What's the name of the file? Usually on CMS installations, it's license.txt. But let's verify that using a Nikto web scan. So, Nikto. Let's search for Nikto. So, dash H for the target. No SSL if you want to disable SSL checks. Okay. So, Nikto dash H. But the thing is, which target? On which port? Yeah, it's the same one, running on port 9007, I assume. So... Um, no SSL. Zero hosts detected. Wow. Let's try this. Okay. So we started to get some info. This is the Apache version. These are SSL information. We're still waiting for more. The next question was, what is the name of the software being used on the standard HTTP port? Let's go back to the nmap scan and find out. That's the main port, or the default one, it's 80 and it's running light or light HTTPD. That's the name of the software. What's the flag value for the web page hosted on port 8000? We did this uh, earlier in the video where we scanned the web server running on this port using directory search or directory buster. And we found out that the flag was um, stored in the contact us page. Appears to be outdated the for the Apache version software is outdated. Now, following the output, if you wait, if you are patient enough, you will get the uh, statement that license of text may be used to get version information about the software. But this uh, the scan could take a lot of time. I'm gonna skip this, guys. You can also visit the file itself using the browser, and you will see here that license can also be used to find version information. So that was for the uh, today's for today's video guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'm gonna see you later.